there. I'm Alexandra. I'm one of the medical students in the clinic here. Um, so today we'll be performing the thyroid exam. Does that sound okay? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. All right, so the first thing that we'll start with is the vital signs. So we want to take special attention to the heart rate, the blood pressure, and the temperature. In hyperthyroidism, you can see tachycardia, an elevated systolic blood pressure, and an elevated temperature. Whereas in hypothyroidism, you can see bradycardia, an elevated diastolic blood pressure, and low temperature. Okay, so now we're going to move on to inspection. Um, when performing the exam, you want to have from the chin up to the clavicles exposed. Um, so first we're going to start uh, at the head, uh, specifically looking at the eyes. In hyperthyroidism, you can see lid retraction, which is where the sclera will show above the cornea. In Graves' ophthalmopathy specifically, we can see chemosis, which is erythema of the conjunctiva, as well as exothalamus. In hypothyroidism, we can see periorbital edema, thinning of the hair, and a loss of the outer third of the eyebrow. On the tongue, we can see glossitis and macroglossia. Moving on to the neck, we will inspect from the front and the side, specifically taking note of any scars to indicate a previous thyroidectomy, any masses, which could be a goiter or enlarged lymph nodes, or any swelling. Um, we'll also give the patient a cup of water to drink and just hold the, mouth, the water in your mouth initially. And now you can swallow and we expect to see the thyroid move up and down with the swallow as we saw there. Now moving on to the hands, I'll get you to stretch out both of your hands and I'll just place a paper on top um, looking for any signs of tremor. The paper allows us to pick up a fine tremor, which we don't see in this case. Now looking more closely at the hands, um, in hypothyroidism, you would see hands that are cold, dry, and coarse. Whereas in hyperthyroidism, you can see palmar erythema um, and warm, clammy hands. Looking back at the nails, onchololysis or retraction of the nail can be seen in both hypo and hyperthyroidism, but it is more common in hyperthyroidism. Next, we will move to palpation of the thyroid. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so we will start by locating the thyroid gland is located be below the cricoid cartilage. To palpate the thyroid gland, you can palpate from in front of the patient or standing behind the patient. Both will be correct. To find the thyroid, start at the first protrusion coming down the neck, which is the thyroid cartilage at C4, C5. This is also the Adam's apple in male patients. The next protrusion will be the cricoid cartilage at C6, and the isthmus of the uh, thyroid will, will be right below that. It is only one to four millimeters in diameter. Now, when palpating the thyroid, use two fingers in each hand and use the pads of the fingers. Now palpate the lobe, uh, the right and the left lobe of the thyroid gland. You can comment on the size of the gland, the consistency, whether there's any nodules and any tenderness. Each lobe should be five centimeters by two centimeters by two centimeters. To palpate the, each lobe, ask the patient to move their neck to one side. So to palpate the left lobe, patient will move the head to the left, which allows you to get under the sternocleidomastoid, and then moving to the right. Finally, to see uh, whether a nodule is a thyroglossal cyst or uh, a nodule on the thyroid, ask the patient to stick out their tongue. A thyroglossal cyst will uh, move up with tongue protrusion, whereas the thyroid nodule will not. In Graves' disease, you can find a soft, diffusely enlarged thyroid with no nodules. In Hashimoto's thyroiditis, causing hypothyroidism, you can find a firm, diffusely enlarged, and slightly tender thyroid with no nodules. 
In the thyroid malignancy, you may find a firm singular nodule, and in iodine deficiency, you can find a multi-nodular goiter. Now moving to auscultation. Ask the patient to hold their breath while listening to both lobes of the thyroid gland. Listen using the diaphragm of your stethoscope. You are listening for a brewery. A brewery can be heard in Graves' disease due to increased vascularity of the gland. This is a special test for the thyroid exam. This is the lid leg test. I'll stand one meter away from the patient and ask them to follow my finger with their eyes. They need to look up and then look down. A normal test is when the eyes and the eyelids move simultaneously and an abnormal test is when the lids lag behind the eyes. This is a special test for the thyroid exam. This is Pemberton's sign. In this test, I'll ask the patient to lift their hands up above their head and hold it there for one minute. This is a test for venous obstruction, which can be seen in many conditions, one of which is a large goiter. I'm looking for signs of facial congestion, cyanosis, and respiratory distress during this maneuver. This is a special test for the thyroid exam. This is testing for proximal muscle weakness. Have the patient sitting in a chair and cross their arms across their chest. Ask them to stand up from the chair. You can also test muscle weakness by having them hold their arms up like this and hold it against your resistance. In hypothyroidism, patients can have proximal muscle weakness. This is a special test for the thyroid exam. We will be testing deep tendon reflexes. You'll of course need your reflex hammer. In thyroid disease, your reflexes will be diffusely affected. I'll remind you about the grading system for reflexes. Zero would, a score of zero would be a no reflex response. A score of one plus can be normal or abnormal, and that indicates a decreased uh, reflex response. A score of two plus is normal. A score of three plus are brisk reflexes, which can be normal or abnormal. And a score of four plus is abnormal and is clonus. In hypothyroidism, you may see reflexes graded zero or one plus. And in hyperthyroidism, you can see scores of three plus or four plus. The reflexes that you can examine include the Achilles tendon reflex, which is testing uh, S1, S2, the patellar tendon reflex, testing L3, L4, the brachioradialis reflex, testing C5 and C6, and the triceps tendon reflex, testing C7, C8.